Alright, what is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, I said in one of my other previous videos that I was going to do this about a week from the time that I posted that video. I don't remember which video it was. Um, but on April 27th, I was going to make a anniversary video for the SS Sultana. Which, I'll give you the history of this ship and how it eventually made its downfall uh, later in the video. But, I wanted to make that video on April 27th, considering that was the day that, the, uh, uh, that this ship made its demise. Um, but, I'm doing it today because I was short on time on April 27th, so I really wasn't able to get around to that. And, I just kind of forgot about the YouTube channel for like a week and I didn't post anything on there so I'm sorry for that but let's get started with this overview of this boat this grand ship so the SS Sultana was a side wheel paddle steamer built entirely out of wood by John Lithenberry boat yard in 1834 I think. Let me go check Wikipedia real quick. It was built in... Well, it was launched in 1863. Um, so it was made in 1863. So this ship was about... Oh, what? One, two years old when it exploded? Um, but it was a wooden sidewheel paddle steamer that mainly ran cotton and trade up through the Mississippi. When the Civil War started in 1860, um, she wasn't built yet. She was built in 1863. So by the time she was built, she was already conscripted and uh, I guess you could say drafted into troop ship service. So her job was to carry Union and Confederate troops home and to the war effort uh, up and down the Mississippi River. Now, her captain, J. Cass Mason, he was not well liked by his peers. He pushed his ship to the limits almost to, dang uh, almost to dangerous speeds, and people, would warn him, and people would warn him, you know, if you keep doing this to your ship, it's going to quit on you. And he didn't listen to him. Well, uh, in 1865, I don't, rem I don't remember the exact date, but, um, in 1865, close to the end of the year, the Confederate prison camp, Andersonville, was liberated. Now, if you don't know, if you haven't studied about the Civil War, like I have, you'll know, uh, if you've studied the Civil War like I have, then you'll know that Andersonville was one of the most brutal Confederate prison camps in the war. These men left that prison beaten, starved, and worked to the bone. So, they got on this ship, and they were just happy as can be. They were ready to go home. They wanted to see their sweethearts. They wanted to see their wives. They were just eager and ready to go home. That's all they could think about. So, they load up onto the Sultana, um, and the captain is approached by the dock officer uh, in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, so, he's approached by this dock officer, and the dock officer offers him a huge sum of money to carry about a thousand passengers, um, up to, I think it was Tennessee. So, the dock officer sits up there, and he's like, hey, um, if you take these, uh, these a thousand passengers up to, uh, up to Memphis, then... I'll give you this huge sum of money. I think it was like somewhere around $373, which in today's money is a lot. I can't do math, so I can't tell you the exact um, equivalent it would be in today's money. But J. Cass Mason, like he always, like he had done pre several times before, was like, okay, you'll give me this much money, I'll take the bribe. So they load over a thousand men. Union troops onto this boat. This boat was designed to carry 379 passengers. And on this day, 
It was laden with over one, 100,000 Union troops. The floors were sagging from these men who were just crowded, crammed together, sh shoulder to shoulder. The floors were sagging from these men standing on there, and the ship was top-heavy and overladen. On top of all these passengers on this boat making it top-heavy, there was a faulty boiler on the ship, too. This boiler should have been totally replaced, but it was patched because they were short on time. They needed to get these men home within this certain time frame. Otherwise, J. Cass Mason wouldn't get his precious money. So, they were short on time. They patched this boiler, and they, when it should have been replaced, and they went on their way. So, as this weakened boiler is just struggling, struggling to keep up. The engines are getting clogged with the um, Mississippi mud from the riverbed. Um, and the ship is just struggling to keep against the current because they were traveling against the current at the time. Um, so they're struggling and they're struggling and they're just trying to just get these men home to get, to get these men safe because the last thing they need is a bunch of angry soldiers on their hands. You can't do much when you're in the middle of the ocean and you're surrounded by a bunch of angry men. One lesson that a lot of people, I guess, have learned. So, at about 2 a.m., um, they are seven miles west, they're seven miles east, not west, east of Memphis, when this huge explosion just lights up the sky. These men are sleeping and then boom, big explosion, uh, burning plywood, uh, shrapnel from the smokestacks, uh, fire is just billowing up into the air. And most of these men were on the decks at the time. So a lot of these men were flung into the air and, it, and if they weren't killed from the initial blast, they were either, they either drowned or they died on impact in the water. Because if you fly up into the air off a steamship and you hit the water, the water's like concrete you won't survive a fall like that so oh and i forgot to tell you all about the image that i was on so this image is of a picture of the sultana about to leave vicksburg and you can see if i can zoom in here all of those men are soldiers and they've got their hats in the air they're ready to go home they're excited so yep and you can see that she's kind of listing a bit so that just goes to show how top heavy she was when she embarked on this voyage. This next picture is not a picture. It's a painting of the Sultana when it was on fire. And you can see just the amount of fire and just the amount of people in the water. If I can zoom in on this image here, the amount of people in the water um, when the ship eventually went up in flames. And you can see that there are people trapped on the balconies here as well. So... This ship explodes, and these men... Now, keep in mind, these men are recently paroled Union troops from Andersonville. So they're weak. They can't swim. Now, some of these guys were in the Navy. Some of them knew how to swim pretty well, but, be, but because they were so weak, they couldn't swim. They couldn't keep up. So they drowned. Um, J. Cass Mason was, among, was one of the first to die in the initial explosion because he was in the pilot house and you can see right here it's um it doesn't exist anymore so he was one of the first casualties um but yeah um now she was sitting right in the middle of this river and if you don't know anything about rivers there are two banks on the side so uh after the explosion early that morning um, farmers and different civilians from the riverbanks came to the burning hulk of the ship and they started grabbing people out of the water. And the water was so cold that night that when they found these people, they were either just floating on top of the water dead or dangling on the trees. And they just, I assume that they just had this look of fear, just just this look of sorrow and fear in their eyes after what they had just seen. They were just 
sleeping soundly in their cabins, and then all of a sudden, what they have known, what they have loved, is now burning. So, yeah, um, you could imagine the amount of psychological and mental damage this might have done to their survivors. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the ship. Now, for some fun facts. Well, there's only one that I know of. This ship was actually very, very luxurious for, um, its time. For a steamship that travels up and down the Mississippi River, mainly for cotton and trade, this ship was very, very luxurious. Its staterooms were, um very lavish and uh, only the rich of the southern states could acquire these state rooms um if any of you have played uh red dead redemption 2 and uh you've done that mission where you have to go rob the um steamboat um if you've looked at pictures of the interior of the sultana or paintings there were no pictures of the interior but if you look at the paintings of the interior, it looks a lot like the Grand Corrigan featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. But that's going to do it for this video. I will see y'all later. Goodbye.